Okay, in this video we're looking at testing claims about the population proportion. And I just wanted to uh, remind you, starting out before discussing this procedure, that um, we use p hat as an estimator of the population proportion. And it's defined as x over n, where essentially x is a binomial random variable. That's a key point that it's binomial in nature. Um, and x represents the number of subjects having the trait you're looking for or are interested in. And n is the total number of subjects surveyed in the problem. Um, one example could be for, you might conduct a survey regarding divorce, you might ask a thousand people um, about whether they've been divorced or not before in their lifetime, and X would count the number of people who are divorced out of that group, so they're either divorced or not, and that makes it um, pretty much binomial because you'd have a fixed number of trials and most of the other, all the other conditions would be met to meet the binomial experiment in that scenario. All right, so if it's binomial in nature, it might bother you that um, you know, in the past we always used the bell curve to test hypothesis, and so now you might say, well, that must mean there's going to be something very different, because the bell curve is uh, representing the normal distribution, and this statistic has a binomial distribution, so there's a big difference there. Normally when we use x-bar, we know x-bar can be assumed to be normal, if the sample size is large enough. The question is, can we assume that about this variable? Well, we're going to see that we're actually going to use a binomial approximation, so we use the, the normal curve to approximate the binomial distribution, and um, what's going to happen there is that we will basically use the bell curve in spite of the fact that this is not bell-shaped in distribution. And it, it works reasonably well in, in many instances. Um, there is though like a little asterisk on this problem, which is to say that there's a, a lot of research that shows that in certain extreme cases, this procedure we're talking about in most elementary classes does not work very well. So you have to be careful when using it. Um, we're going to have another video that's going to discuss that issue along with some other technical aspects to this procedure that we're going to leave out of this current video. This video is just going to be for just elementary students just to go through and uh, determine you know, the, the things that stay the same in the seven-step procedure we learned and the things that change. So let's start with that then. So what's going to change with step one when we do this procedure? Well, when you're testing a claim about a proportion, the main thing that changes is that um, the symbol changes. You're no longer testing it about the mean, the claim, so you're going to have symbols like this, rho, right? You'll say rho is greater than, say, 50%. 50% as a decimal is 0.5, right? So that might be your claim in the problem, instead of having mu, right? It won't be mu is greater than 50, it'll be rho, the population symbol for proportion. Okay, so that's one change. It's kind of more of a cosmetic thing, right? I mean, it has meaning behind it, because it's, it's the population proportion, not the population mean. But it's not too difficult, because everything else remains basically the same in that step or procedure. Okay, from there, the next thing we want to look at is the step two. Does anything change there? And no, step two, basically, HO and HA still have the same properties and conditions that they had in the previous method of hypothesis testing we learned. Of course, again, the symbol would be rho and not mu in the problem. So one and two are pretty much similar. Um, step three, the data step, well, that's a little different because the data will be different. What you really need in the problem is a p-hat, right? So you're going to need a sample proportion, and that comes from x over n. So sometimes they'll tell you how many subjects had the trait in the population over how many total subjects surveyed. Um, or they might just give you a p-hat right in the problem and say, you know, 70% of the sample group had, you know, um, a car that was over 10 years old or something like that, right? So they might tell you the percent in the problem, but you're going to need some kind of a p-hat. Of course, you will also need an n in the problem. If they give it to you here, you have it, great. If they just give you the decimal, you're going to need to know how many people they surveyed in the problem. And of course, we still need a significance level to conduct our hypothesis test. If it's not given, we assume 5%, but we will need at least an n and a p-hat to work with in this procedure. All right, now once you have that taken care of, um, and that's very different, right, from what we had before. One thing I want to point out, one thing that's majorly missing here, uh, when you compare it to the other procedure we learned for hypothesis testing when we're testing claims about the mean, is that there's no standard deviation. That's really helpful, actually, to know that, because sometimes students get confused, they're working on problems, they go to solve the problem using the uh, approach that's designed to test a claim about the mean, but maybe the problem is really about a proportion, and when they do that, they often run into this issue that there's no standard deviation. Well, that's a good heads up that you're dealing with a problem about the proportion, so at that moment you want to take a break, go back, read the problem again, and say, hmm, okay, I don't see anything about the mean here. This is a hypothesis testing procedure about proportion. Okay, so that's a, a really helpful thing to know there's no standard deviation. All right, from there you're going to uh, calculate a test statistic, and that test stat is going to have a very different formula than what we had before. I mean, it's similar in overall structure, but the specifics are pretty different. So let's look at that. 
So before, what we had was we had, in the test stat, we would have had, you know, x bar minus mu, you know, over sigma divided by the square root of n. Let's analyze that test stat for a moment. That old test stat was x bar minus mu sub zero uh, sigma divided by the square root of n. If you look at the structure, the overall structure of this, you're going to see that x bar was your point estimator, right? So for us, what will that be? Well, if we're testing a claim about a proportion, our point estimator becomes p hat, right? p hat, the sample proportion. And then this guy, mu sub zero, that would have come from the null hypothesis. And so, you know, in our old test stat, we were testing a claim about the means, and the symbol was mu sub zero. Here, it's going to be rho sub zero, right? Rho sub zero. I'm also going to make this more, look more like a p, because remember that the point estimator here is p hat where the population symbol is a rho. They look very similar, but rho is a little more rounded here at the top. Okay, so that is basically the equivalent of this that we did in the old test step for him. Then we had this quantity at the bottom, this whole thing here. That was actually the standard error for x bar. So if we're following that same analogous procedure, we should have the standard error for p hat here at the bottom. And so that's what we'll do. But the question is, what is that standard error, right? How does p hat vary, in other words? That's what we're looking for, right? How does the p hat value vary? Well, you're going to say that it varies like this. The square root of p naught times q naught divided by n. I like when I say p naught, it sounds like um, peanut, right? It's actually not p, it's rho naught, actually. It's rho, that same symbol there. And then q naught, the complement of that, divided by n. And what this represents is essentially um, this guy and his uh, complementary pair. So for example, if, if the hypothesis says that the proportion is 60%, the opposite of that, the complement of that is 40%. So if 60% of the population have the trait, the other 40% do not have the trait. So you would put 60 times 40 in that instance here, divided by the square root of n. Notice these have that subscript zero again. They're hypothesized values, because we assume in the hypothesis testing procedure that HO is correct, it's true. So we're going to use those values from the claim here. And then we have um, N, of course, sample size. All of that's under the square root, and that's the standard error for p hat, under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. OK, and so that becomes our test stat formula. So it's a little more complicated looking, but that's it. And then essentially, we have critical value, initial conclusion, and final conclusion steps remaining the same. Because um, this has a z distribution, so it's like our very first procedure when we learned hypothesis testing. Uh, we were dealing with the uh, you know, um, hypothesis testing procedure for x bar, and you know, we assumed that it was normally distributed. We got a z critical value, compared that to our test stack, got an initial conclusion, and then finally ordered our final conclusion. So these three steps at the end don't change at all. So I'd say that you know there's a lot of little inner detail that's different, but it has the overall feel or structure of the hypothesis testing procedures we learned before. Um, the technical side of this, like some of the, the warnings about when to use this procedure versus when you should be careful and not use the procedure, we'll look at that in another um, video. But for now, that's just the overview of how to conduct a hypothesis test about a proportion. Of course, there are plenty of sample problems that do that. So watch the videos for that.